football. Enid Plainsman football with Steve and Steve. Hello again. Welcome to Plainsman Football, the coaches show with Steve and Steve, along with Coach Steve Hayes. I'm Steve Kine with the City of Enid. We are pleased to provide you the uh, coaches show each and every week. Uh, a difficult um, district loss for the Plainsman last Friday night as they took on Edmund Santa Fe. And Coach, I remember, oh, it's been several weeks ago in one of our conversations, you said, you know, it's really difficult to come back from turnovers. Yeah. You said something along those lines mm -hmm. about when a turnover, turnover takes place on, yeah. on your side of the ball, sometimes it's difficult to um, play catch up. Mm -hmm. Did that seem to be the case? Um, well, what, I mean, your assessment of last Friday's obviously game? very, very disappointed in um, that we didn't make it a more difficult game for Santa Fe. Sure, um, very, very much in the turnover battle uh, caused a lot of issues. Um, you know, they're good offensively and they're good defensively, and so you can't help them. Uh, what, what's really disappointing is uh, we moved the football offensively against them better than any opponent they've played this year from a yards uh, standpoint and from a yards per game standpoint. But but we we gave them the ball, and so you can't do that and win. And uh, you can't put your defense in that situation. And defensively, we struggled to stop them. I think the only area that we really played uh, well in was special teams. And you got to have all three phases of the game. Well, you knew coming in that they had an offense. They had a couple of tall receivers. They could run the ball. They were a um, <coughs> um, talented ball club. But again, as you said, um, they don't need help to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, you kind of want to keep it on your side. Exactly. Well, we have an opportunity to see some highlights, and we're pleased that we're able and appreciate your uh, support staff, your coaches that are able to provide these um, highlights for us. So what will we see here in just a few moments? You know, we'll see some, some, some examples of what I was talking about and how productive we were offensively when we held on to the football and, and did the things we were supposed to. And defensively, we, we made some really good plays, too, especially in the run game. Probably needed to play better in the past game, but run-wise, we did really well. And I, I imagine as Edmund Santa Fe was <laughs> leaving the field, they were thinking they had been – the score may not have depicted it, but I'm confident they felt like they were in a ball game because you saw some of the defensive stops at the Plainsman sure. hitting their running back in the backfield. Yeah. So I'm quite confident when they left the field, they know that they had been sure. in a ball game sure. and they had some challenges. Well, yeah. let's take this time out, and Coach Hayes each week gives us kind of the play-by-play -play of what the highlights are all about. So let's run those at this time. Coach? Okay, here we go. We got a good uh, good pass play from Titan Stevens to Damian Ryman. A 41-yard reception here. Great catch by Great Damian catch. Uh, over the defender. Good throw. Well placed ball. Big play for us at that point in time in the game. Another catch by Damian. Really, really impressed by the run here. Breaking tackles and fighting for 13 yards on that play. Good 13-yard gain. Uh, love this clip. Um, bootleg. Flip out to Teelan Phillips. Teelan had a really good game for us, both catching and running the football. Uh, runs over the corner for an additional three or four yards. Good physical play by Thielen as well. Like I said, you see those clips. You can see offensively how we had some really good productivity. Here, great tackle here by um, uh, Savion Vasquez. Uh, new player for us this year. has done a great job. Sophomore, great future. Love this run by Thielen Phillips. Uh, has about eight people make contact with him from the line of scrimmage moving forward. And still is able to gain about 11 yards. One of the best 11-yard runs I think you'll see. Defense had a goal line stand here in the fourth quarter. That was nice. A uh, good tackle again here. You see Savion and and um, uh, Dylan Gall making the play for a loss there in the goal line. And then here's a GT guard tackle pull run play where Will's able to take it in the end zone and finish the run and score. Uh, here defensively, uh, we have uh, um, Arion Levy, who was on the show a couple weeks ago, coming in and making a great play off the edge for a two-yard loss. Um, good tackle, good physical play, and I think he makes another play here as well. This is kind of the Arion Levy highlight sequence. Um, no, actually, this is Trent Mitchell here making the play. Good job by Trent. So it's pleased to see the effort. Yep. You know, oh, yeah. The, yeah. the no quit. Yep. Kind of I think, and I think our younger kids came in in the fourth quarter and really played hard and played well. Uh, should be a good JV game this evening when the team score off in Santa Fe uh, based on the effort we saw and the success we saw in the fourth quarter Friday night. Um, district loss, so what kind of impact does it have on your practice this week? Uh, more intensity or just um, raise the awareness of, you know, gentlemen, we've got to do ABC this week? Well, I think I think there's a wise balance there. We're, we're getting into the seventh week of the season, so we're a little banged up, and so you have to be careful with what you do physically sure. as far as the contact and stuff. Um, really, right now, it's about adjusting your scheme towards what um, Norman does offensively and defensively. Um, and so the learning really is how do we block their front and how do we attack their blocking schemes more so than maybe installing a lot of new things. And so we're really getting into a, a mid-season routine 
where things have been installed, and now it's just a matter of applying what we learn to our next opponent, which is which is a good time of year. Uh, I, I see um, I see a good week of practice. Probably going kind of to incorporate some things. It'll be fun. Uh, these next three games are really important. We still have a chance to make the playoffs, but uh, these next three games are critical, starting with the stretch with Norman. And it's amazing. We were just sitting here, and it was August. Yeah, that's and right. here we are almost mid-October. It's just amazing. You're talking seventh game of the season, mm -hmm. how quick it goes. And you're right. It does take a toll. High school kids, junior high uh, or college, I mean, you get to the sixth, seventh game of the season after a long year, you're getting kind of – Beat yeah, and, and health is a big part of late season success. Yeah. The teams that find a way to stay healthy uh, usually have a much better chance of winning. Uh, and some of those teams that have strong starts end up struggling in the end because of uh, losing critical kids to injury. Outside of the turnovers, uh, your assessment of the Plainsman effort on uh, Friday night? You know, I, I don't know that there's been a time this year that I haven't been proud of, of the effort that our kids give and how hard they work from a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I, I definitely think there's a lot of strength there and, and, and proud of the fact that, that, it, that they have the courage to continue to work hard even when things are tough. And, and you know, Friday night, we've been through two weeks of tough games against quality opponents, and um, you know, I'm proud of our kids, how they rebound. And, and I have no doubt today we'll get to practice and they'll be ready to go back to work. And this, it may be difficult to define effort, but you can sure see it on tape. You sure can. <laughs> it's kind of the speed that people play. Exactly. I you agree. can really see it on film. I agree. Well, that's Coach Steve Hayes' assessment of the Edmond Santa Fe game last week. He alluded to um, Norman upcoming this Friday night. Well, later in the show, we'll talk about the Norman, uh, I believe, Norman Tigers. Mm -hmm. game, is right. the, uh, game is on the road, if I believe. That's correct. Okay, those are the highlights. And let's take this time out to meet some of the members of the uh, Ena Plainsman football team and when we come back we'll have our student athlete for the week we'll be right back i'm darren keith class of 2019 wide receiver caleb stanley class of 2020 o-line d-line my name is noah escobedo i'm in the 11th grade and i play receiver and safety k potion class of 2021 defensive line my name is hunter falarsi i'm class of 2021 and i play linebacker Herman Velasquez, defensive end, senior. Dayton Griffin, 10th grade, defensive end. Welcome back to the Coach's Show with Steve and Steve. Hope you enjoy the, the opportunity that we provide to uh, show you other members of Plainsman football. And uh, Coach, uh, one of our favorite segments. Uh, mm -hmm. We have many, but one of our favorite segments is when we get to uh, introduce to the viewers uh, our student athlete. And our of the week, and our student this week is Ronan Ford. Mm -hmm. Ronan, welcome to the Indy Television Network Studios. How's how are you doing? Good, doing good. Just gotta keep pressing on. Mm -hmm. Just gotta get better every week. Have faith and make it through it. Mm -hmm. Make it through it. Mm -hmm. Coach Hayes has some questions for you that'll help you make it through it. <laughs> That's right. You know, we have so many great kids on our football team, and it's always fun to to introduce a new one to our, our town and to the people that watch the show. And uh, Ronan is no exception. He has uh, been a, a great addition to our staff. He moved here a couple years ago from Texas and uh, has been just a, 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 an outstanding young man and really a good part of our program. Really proud to have him. Uh, he uh, is a swing player. He's kind of a utility player. He plays a little bit of everything on the offensive line and is filled in in many critical situations there and then also starts for us on the defensive line. So, Ronan, tell the, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and your job in football. Uh, I play defensive end, which is kind of – we kind of make blocks. We're kind of like offensive line of the defensive line. We make blocks so the linebackers can make the plays. So we're kind of unsung heroes, yeah, I sure. guess. Yeah, I agree. I think that's correct. And then I play offensive line. I play pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. They really need me that week. So yeah. I could be playing left tackle one week and right guard the next week. Yeah. So. What positions on the O-line have you played in games this year? Uh, left tackle, mm -hmm. left guard, right guard, right tackle. Yeah, it's everything but center. He's <laughs> filled. He has. He's, yeah. he's definitely our swing guy. And, and last week started at uh, right tackle because uh, Brian Hernandez was out and did a great job there. And, and so we're, we're real grateful for his ability to step in. And, and it kind of lends to his football intelligence as well as that he's able to do that. It's obvious you have his number to call. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, One of four positions on the line. Ron, you, you are definitely a kid who loves football. Talk a little bit about why you love football and why you play. Uh, I love football because of the brotherhood and mm -hmm. the discipline that you get from it. I love hanging out with the guys. Mm -hmm. you know, they're my brothers. I love, I love hitting people. and It's just something I've always loved and something I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. It's mostly just the discipline and the pride that I get from it. Knowing well, that. How old were you when you played football for the first time? 
Nine. Nine. Okay. So you've been playing for a long time. Yes, sir. Okay. Now this is your senior season, and you've I know you've worked hard to get ready for the season, but tell the audience some of the things you've done to prepare for your final high school year in football. Uh, I pretty much lived in the weight room all of off season. Mm -hmm. Had to get faster, stronger. Mm -hmm. Had to put on about 20 pounds because mm -hmm. co coach said I need to be at least 245 but before season starts. So mm -hmm. I had to eat a lot, way more, and uh, just kind of increasing my f football IQ on everything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun when your job is to eat, huh? Yes, sir. That's a good job. That's a good job. All right, now we have four games left. Uh, what are your goals for the rest of this season as a, as a member of our team? Uh, make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We've got to win four games to go to the playoffs, so that's a big part of what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure – I want to make sure I leave something for the younger guys. Mm -hmm. to follow on, make sure they're ready for their season mm -hmm. that's coming ahead. Uh, just make my school, my town proud. There you go. There you go. I love that, that legacy part as well. All right, we talked about this as a, as a player and coach before, but share with the audience what you plan to do um, after you graduate. Uh, I want to go to college, get my degree, uh, and be a petroleum engineer, work with my dad and my brother. Mm -hmm. That's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Share with the audience how big your family is. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I got eight brothers, eight brothers and sisters, just my mom and dad. They all pretty much have worked in the oil field almost all their life, so that's something I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest out of eight, so mm -hmm. it's kind of fun. You are the caboose. That's right. That's exactly the right. The this is a one-bedroom house, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Brady Bunch. There you go. There you go. Um, Ronan, um, just a few moments ago you were talking about the brotherhood, and my question is, what will you take away um, from your football experience at Enid from, the, from the, your interaction with the coaches? Uh, People can understand the brotherhood because of all the practice time together with other athletes, but how about taking away from uh, Coach Hayes and the others? Definitely the MDOL part of what we do. I take away from what Coach does. And the what part? The MDOL. MDOL, and we remind, remind our viewers what MDOL is. It's integrity, mental toughness, discipline, accountability, and loving one another. I'll definitely take that away from them. Uh, patience, definitely learn a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. Coaches have a lot of patience with us, with what we do. I think in a family of 10, you had already had <laughs> the patience <laughs> built right. in, I That's would right. think. That's right. Uh, Coach Hayes, anything else? No, but it's just a, a lot of fun to be able to introduce a kid like Roman sure. to our community, and and hopefully people come out and watch him play. Uh, he definitely he definitely does care about this community and making him proud and and doing his best for the school and the team. Ronan, thanks for being here. Thank you. Great job. Uh, Ronan Ford, number seventy two, is our um, student athlete for the week, and uh, he is a senior at Enid High School. Let's take this time out. We need to meet uh, some of the assistant coaches, and let's do that right now. I'm coach Dusty Quarles, I coach secondary. I went to the Northwestern Oklahoma State University and the best advice I've ever been given is keep God first and uh, if you do so and have a relationship with Christ then you'll never have to worry about whether or not you're adequate for today's journey. I'm Kyle Young, I attended the University of Central Oklahoma. I coach linebackers and defensive coordinator and the best advice I'd probably give or have received is uh, when it comes to your morals or your faith, don't settle. Uh, always stand on the rock and uh, never falter no matter what's going around in your life. My name is Kareem Sears. I coach the defensive line for the Indian Plainsmen. I went to the University of Nebraska, and the best piece of advice that I've gotten is leaders leave from the front, not from the back. I'm Kyle Davis. I attended the University of Oklahoma. I coach the offensive line, and the best piece of advice I've gotten is give it to God. Thanks for joining us on Ain't It Plainsman Football. Appreciate you staying with us each and every week as we bring you the latest recap of the Friday night game and look forward to the next Friday night game. Uh, Coach, we move into a segment called Chalk Talk. Mm -hmm. and We had talked about some of the player positions for the previous week, but we want to talk a little bit about terminology. Yeah. And um, for people that are very familiar with the game, they'll understand some of these. And if you're not familiar, you'll hear these. Maybe a television commentator will yeah. mention these from time to time. Yeah. But uh, a phrase that comes to mind, and you really hate to see this, is ineligible receiver downfield. Yes. So what took place there? An eligible receiver, two things, one of two things have happened. Uh, an offensive lineman and a lineman number 
has gotten further than three yards past the line of scrimmage on a pass play. Uh, they're allowed to block as far as three yards down the field, but after that point, uh, then it becomes a penalty if the ball's thrown. And then another situation where that happens where if, if a, another person outside of you is on the line of scrimmage and you're lined up on the line of scrimmage, it's a, they call it the covered up. And at that point in time, you can't go out. And so the, the end people on the line of scrimmage can go out, and anybody from, that's off the line of scrimmage can go out. But if there's somebody inside on the line of scrimmage that's covered up by somebody outside of them, they're ineligible, and you'll get an ineligible call for that as yeah. well. And sometimes we may get frustrated if we're watching a ball game and they call that. But just, just imagine the challenge you have of doing your assignment, you're blocking, you're doing your role, and mm -hmm. trying to keep track of the fact that I can't go two yards or three yards downfield. Yes. Where am I at? And all the confusion that's going on, you're not actually keeping track of your steps. So yes. it does happen. It sure Thank does. you for that clarification. You bet. Coaches talk a little bit about some passing routes. You'll hear somebody say, well, uh, that was a post route. Let's, mm -hmm. let's go with the post route first. What, what are they talking about? Where are the guy, where's the guy running to? Typically, there are two types of post routes. It's a 10-yard a straight line followed by a, a break that you aim at the goal post. Um, a skinny post, you would aim at the near goal post. And a fat post, you'd aim at the far goal post. And depending on what type of spacing you want from your other receivers, uh, uh, the receiver would run either a skinny or a fat post. A lot of times when you see a single receiver route on a post, it's the skinny version because it gives them more room to work sure. to the ball and the quarterback more room to throw sure. it. Um, and so it's a deep route. Uh, we actually gave up uh, two of those for touchdowns last Friday night, and so we're very familiar uh, with what the post looks like uh, all too <laughs> up close and personal. Yeah. Um, and so if you were at the game Friday night and you saw uh, those two plays, that was a great example. And the quarterback threw a great ball. Uh, their quarterback really at Santa Fe did a, did a great job Friday night and hit their receivers in stride. Well, I'd seen, I'd seen Edmund Santa Fe early in the year, and I was impressed with the touch the, the quarterback mm -hmm. had on the ball I agree. and then some of the tall receivers they had. So yeah. they can make that post route yeah. look, look yeah. easy. It's usually a home run. Yeah. <clears throat> Coach, you hear the term in the flat. He mm -hmm. was in the flat. Yes. Well, there's no flat surface out there. What are they talking yeah, about? That's pretty, <laughs> pretty good point. I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. Um, uh, the flat is an area of the field. Uh, that receivers run uh, routes into that's short and wide. And so it's usually five to ten yards past the line of scrimmage towards the sideline. And so any type of route that you see uh, five to ten yards deep and, and on the width of the field within five to ten yards of the out-of-bounds line is a, a route that's attacking the flat area of the football field. And Coach, let's do one more. Okay. When can you call an audible? And an audible is? An audible is when you change the play at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and you can call that at any point in time prior to the expiration of the 25-second play clock. And so as long as you're on a delay of game situation, a quarterback can have the ability to change a play at the line of scrimmage. What we do offensively is really the quarterback has up to three options on any given play, and he decides at the line of scrimmage which option to go with. And so that's kind of our way of calling an audible without saying anything. Uh, the other thing that we do to get an audible done is we'll make a lightning call which is a, a, a hard count to try to get the defense to jump off sides. Also allows us to see how they're lined up. And then based on how they're lined up, the coach will signal in a play that matches their alignment accordingly. And so the coaches really call the audible from the sideline. Okay. Well, we want to take a little different approach this week on Chalk Talk and just kind of delve into some of the terminology that we hear quite often. And hopefully that uh, explained a few things for you. Mm -hmm. Coach, before we take this time out to, to meet more members of uh, the Plainsman football, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Marv Hanna. Yeah. Um, you know, He's just a walking encyclopedia. He is. He knows every score, and he can tell you which game and so forth. But besides being a walking encyclopedia, he's vital to your training program. Sure. Tell he's, us about Mark. He's really a community treasure. I mean, he is the living historian of Enid football. Uh, if anybody wants to know anything about the history of Enid football, he's the first and last place to start. Um, he can tell you who the right guard was on the 1985 – uh, playoff team or whatever and give you his name and number. He's, he's, he's truly amazing, almost savant-like. Uh, and then he's also our equipment manager. He's the one that makes sure our kids have the right equipment on, that it's properly fitted, uh, that it's repaired when it breaks, and that it gets washed and cleaned on a daily basis. And uh, he's really, in a lot of ways, the locker room mom in that regard. Uh, and and, and um, he, he's just a great, great member of our program. Was a student manager back in the late 80s and has uh, been a manager uh, as part of his, his job. Uh, since then, and, and I can't imagine Enid football without Marv Hanna. He's probably the one person uh, among all of us that's irreplaceable. 
He definitely has a servant's heart. He if, does. If you can have that he term. He really does. I agree. And, and you certainly need that. Yeah. And you'll see, Marvin, we may be able to show here Marvin in just a few moments, but uh, we appreciate the work that Marv Hanna does for the Enid Plainsman football team. Mm -hmm. Okay, Coach, another timeout. Uh, we'll come back and we'll want to talk about what were you thinking in just a few moments. Okay. But let's meet uh, more members of Plainsman football team. Ethan Armstrong, junior, quarterback and receiver. Nate Gamble, class of 2021, O-line, D-line. John White, class of 2021, corner, receiver. My name is Trey Mitchell, I play linebacker, and I'm a junior. Trayson Ensminger, running back, sophomore. Caden Bezichet, class of 2021, defensive line. Marvin Hanna, head equipment manager, uh, graduated in high in 1991. I've been equipment manager here for 24 years. Thank you again for joining us each and every week and really throughout the evening on the Indy Television Network on Channel 11 and in high definition. Uh, Coach Steve Hayes looks pretty sharp in that uh, shirt that he has. Compliments of the men's department at Dillard's. Mm -hmm. We want to say special thanks to Dillard's out at the mall for providing the wardrobe for Coach Steve Hayes this year as he changes uh, each and every week. So thank you, Dillard's, for that. Okay, this is the What Were You Thinking segment. And um, you know, my wife said, Steve, what were you thinking? I, I hear this phrase quite often. So I want to direct it towards you, Coach yeah, Hayes. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, there is a strategy involved in the coin toss. Sure. And um, if we win the cost, uh, toss, we're going to do this. If we don't, you know, this is what's going to happen. Let's go back to um, Friday night. Your thoughts before the coin, coin toss, the instruction to your captains. Yep, yep. You know, typically, um, from a data standpoint, it's best to receive the ball to start the second half because it gives you an opportunity to have an extra possession. If you end the ball, if you end the half with the football and then you start the second half with the football, right. you actually get an additional possession over your opponent. And so I think what a lot of people do when they win the toss is they defer uh, and then let the other person choose to take the ball to start the game. Um, and the reason you choose to take the ball is because if you choose to kick, then you've chosen to kick to start both halves, basically what happens. And sometimes that happens. People make a mistake, and mm -hmm. uh, when they have the option, they choose to kick, not realizing to start the second half, the other team can have the option to receive, and now you're kicking to start two halves. And from a possession standpoint, that's a critical error. Uh, if the weather's really bad, uh, you have a lot of wind or rain, potentially, where playing on one end of the field is a huge disadvantage. Uh, a lot of times what you'll do is put the opponent in a situation where they have to receive the ball with the wind to start the game. Um, and that would be one of the times where maybe you would choose to kick to start both halves. I know there's a playoff game when I was in Texas where the weather was really, really bad. And we chose to do that. And by the end of the first quarter, we were ahead 21 to nothing because the ball never got past their 30 yard line because they couldn't punt. It was just too windy. Uh, they basically had to go for it. And we held them and scored and held them and scored and held them and scored. So uh, losing the coin toss definitely affected their ability to win the game that day. And tell us about uh, your success with the Plainsman success on the coin toss this season. <laughs> on coin tosses this year, we are 0 and 6. And so uh, uh, the times that we started the game receiving the football, it's because the opponent has won the toss and deferred. Uh, and then on the times this year that we've kicked off, it's because the opponent's won the toss and chosen to receive. And so. Uh, we, we really haven't been able to make a choice so far this year, but that's okay. One way or another, you got to play. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Coach, thank you very much for that insight and to uh, what were you thinking in dealing with the coin toss? Because believe it or not, folks, there is a strategy behind all of that. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take another time out and meet the remaining uh, assistant coaches. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the um, remaining district game schedule. And um, we'll be back right after this. Coach Cameron Condor, coach quarterbacks, offensive coordinator, attended Grand Canyon University, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, best advice, be yourself. Don't worry what others are thinking about you. My name is Coach Jake Hayes. Uh, I attend the school at Evangel University in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I coach wide receivers for the Union Plainsman. I teach PE at Hayes Elementary, and the best piece of advice I've ever received is anything worth doing is worth doing right. I'm Coach Chad Miller. I graduated from Southwestern Oklahoma State University. I coach safeties for Enid High School. The best advice ever given to me was by my grandfather. He always told me if I wanted something in life, I would need to earn it through hard work. Hello, my name is Wes McGill. I graduated from the University of South Dakota and North Dakota State University. I coach linebackers, and some of the best advice I've been given 
is proud men don't complain, they find solutions. Again, thank you for joining us for The Coach's Show with Steve and Steve. And uh, we'd like to remind you, as you see uh, our studio set design, we want to say special thanks to Gary and Jeff Williams out at On Deck, out at the mall, providing us uh, every year now, it seems like. They've helped us uh, design our studio. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our good friend Jim Riley and his uh, Super Bowl history football. We appreciate Jim loaning that gold-looking football for us. Well, in front of Coach Hayes, you can see uh, Barry Sanders' uh, bobblehead doll. And all you have to do to win that, no purchase necessary, is just to go out to the mall uh, to on deck and fill out an entry form no purchase necessary and you can see right there on your screen coach good looking tailback chairs there are two to be given away uh, nice blue in color very comfortable tailgate chairs two to be given away and there's the Barry Sanders bobblehead doll go to on deck no purchase necessary say hello to Gary Williams fill out an entry and coach Hayes may Pull your name out of the hat or whatever box that we'll have towards the end of the season. But again, you have to. The only effort you have to do is go out to on deck and uh, fill out an entry form. Again, no purchase necessary. The Barry Sanders doll and the two tailback chairs will be given away at the end of our season. Well, the end of the season is not here. We're going to talk Norman Tigers. That's coming up Friday night. Another road game. Uh, I understand they beat Edmund Memorial twenty-one to three. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. um, Edmund Memorial's had a, a tough challenge had a tough this year, year. Yeah. and I think Norman's like three and three on, yep. on their schedule. Yep. But uh, that's Friday night. So what do we know about the Tigers? Tigers are three and three um, defensively. They're an odd type front, so they're going to have a nose guard. That means they're going to have a nose guard and uh, really kind of undersized. They're uh, Biggest players are nose guard at 270, and then there's nobody on their defense after that that's uh, over 200 pounds. Uh, and so the other 10 players are anywhere from 200 pounds to actually 135. One of their starters is 5'5", 135. Uh, they make up for that by being extremely quick. They're very, very athletic, very quick, and runs the football well. And so uh, even though they're not, they're not big, they're undersized, they, they play hard and they play very athletically, and so they definitely pose a challenge on that side of the football. Uh, offensively, they've got a tremendous quarterback. He's already received multiple Division One offers, uh, throws the ball extremely, extremely well, has a good core of receivers to throw to, and that is definitely the strength of their team. Do you uh, have the name of the quarterback? Um, I, I can't. You know, okay. we, we look at the video and we, okay. we look at their numbers. Um, but I, I do know that he's very accomplished and, and really is the bright spot of their team. Uh, and they have really good receivers that he throws it to. And so the big challenge for us this week will be able to stop the pass, the post route. We're going to have to be able to get over the top of the post because that's something they do very, very well. Uh, and then I think keep the football out of their hands by uh, having long sustained drives and, and obviously eliminate the turnovers we've had the last couple of weeks. And, and I, I like, I like uh, the, our ability to just run the football right at them because of their size. Their two defensive tackles are 185 and 190 pounds. And their two defensive ends are right around 200. And so based on some of the teams we've seen the last couple of weeks, that's dramatically different. Sure. Uh, we need to take advantage of it by, by attacking sure. them and running right at them and, and using what I think is one of the strengths of our team, our offensive line. Thank you, Coach, for that mm -hmm. overview of the Norman Tigers. And again, mm -hmm. that's this Friday night. Plainsmen on the road as they travel south of Oklahoma City to Norman for another district game. Okay, we need to take this time out to show some of the airing times of Plainsman football. We'll be back with the closing thought right after this. saw the airing times for the coaches show please share that with family and friends and join us as we watch Enid Plainsman football on the Enid Television Network Coach Hayes thanks for your time Thank beat you. Norman beat Norman we'll see you Friday night the ball game have a good week everyone Thank you for watching Enid Plainsman Football with Steve and Steve on ETN.